So uh, my name is Ilay. I, uh, I recently graduated from Boston University and uh, moved to Visa Research. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about a work uh, I've done back in Boston uh, with Spinoza and Hotak uh, about GGH15 multilinear map with permutation branching program. Uh, August 21st, 2018, Palo Alto, heavy snow. Alice finds a public key encryption scheme which is post-quantum secure based on Schrodinger's equation. Uh, Alice finds out that uh, she missed the NIST post-quantum uh, cryptography competition in round one, but uh, she still finds it interesting to Thank you. Uh, so she still finds it interesting to share the idea and uh, like, uh, let everybody join the attack. So she uh, do it so by post it on blockchain and uh, offer 100 bitcoins to whoever breaks it. Uh, not only does Alice post the scheme on the blockchain, she does it cool by encrypting the 100 bitcoins using witness encryption. So what is a witness encryption? So witness encryption is, um, uh, it takes uh, an MP instance X and a message M. Uh, it, it has the functionality that uh, if it X is satisfiable instance, then uh, anyone who has the potential witness can use the witness to decrypt the message. Uh, and the security says if X turns out to be unsatisfiable, so which means nobody can find uh, any witness, then the message is hidden under the encryption. So in this case, you can think about uh, Alice uh, encrypting the statement. Uh, there is an attack to Alice PKE scheme based on Schrodinger's equation. And uh, if someone finds a polynomial time attack, it can be the witness. And uh, if nobody finds the attack, then the 100 Bitcoin as the message will be hidden uh, forever in the witness encryption. Um, so what do we know about uh, witness encryption at today? Uh, so just as a quick summary of the current status, we have several witness encryption candidates uh, more or less based on multilinear maps. Uh, none of them are based on established cryptographic assumptions. So these are the citations. You can look at them afterwards. Uh, so what's the relation of witness encryption in the title gg 15 Beyond Permutation Branching Programs? Um, so GGH15 is one of the leading, uh, not the leading, one of the candidate uh, multilinear maps. And uh, from multilinear maps, and especially GGH15, we know uh, how to build a lot of cryptographic applications, such as constrained PIF, virus form of uh, obfuscations, and the multilinear, uh, multi-party key agreement. Uh, but it turns out that multilinear maps, and uh, also including GGH15, it is a kind of, a, it's a design framework. So not, not, uh, it does not guarantee that whatever you build from GGH15 or multilinear map is satisfied the security you want. So it gives you a construction, and in fact, each construction we need to analyze in a different way so to understand whether the actual construction is secure or not, depending on, uh, depending on the application. So this is on the board, it summarizes something we have known about uh, what uh, multilinear maps or GGH15 can imply. Uh, and uh, uh, it turns out they live in different spectrums. So some of them can be proven as secure as LWE. Some of them we have uh, explicit attack. And some of them we don't know how to prove, we don't know how to attack. So we call them candidates uh, in this talk. So the main motivation of this work is uh, we want to systematically study gg 15 in a you know, systematic way. And the goal is try to discover new attacks and uh, uh, more like say more insights uh, say how to prove how to attack uh, this GGH15 kind of framework to show what we can build more or what we can break from the previous constructions. And uh, maybe uh, I will just go through uh, kind of this kind of like uh, give some intuition via the lens of uh, witness encryption. So maybe we can build it, maybe we can break all of the candidates, something would happen. Um, with this motivation, uh, let me come to the summarize of this, uh, this, uh, uh, our result. So we have a lot of results, so let me try to pick the, the highlights. Uh, it turns out we have new insights on, uh, as the results in all the three uh, spectrums, uh, but more the, uh, I think more kind of meaningful or more, more, more results we can abstract, it turns out to be on the proof side. So this will be uh, the focus of my talk, uh, that we introduce new lattice tools uh, and the new uh, analysis techniques for GGH15 multilinear map such that it leads to uh, better, uh, leads to different uh, uh, private constraint PIF and uh, lockable obfuscation for general branching program. So the immediate consequence is improving the efficiency, and I think there's more interesting property we can 
dig into that. So also we propose new attack to uh, the existing I.O. candidates on uh, GG15. So we end up seeing like the witness encryption still stands as candidate and um, uh, sort of like another way to say is uh, this result should be written as we try to build a lot of technique to imply witness encryption. We didn't make it, uh, but we provide a lot of insights and uh, hopefully I can convey some of them during this talk. Um, so the, uh, before I start the technical part, I want to just uh, uh, relieve myself because uh, GG15 multilinear map is a very beautiful object, but it's a little bit hard to understand for people uh, who first see it for the first time. So in this talk, I will just uh, sketch the surface of, uh, give you a flavor of what's going on and hopefully it can convey as much idea as uh, we hope for. So um, multilinear map, uh, uh, just a brief recall, uh, is motivated by uh, Bonnet and Silverberg. So you can think about uh, if you have a lot of group elements, G to the S1, G to the S2, G to the S3, if there are some magical way to compute the, uh, the product of the exponent, uh, uh, the product of the secrets in the exponent without revealing them in the middle, then this is kind of the uh, easiest way to think about a multilinear map. Or you can think about a multilinear map as homomorphic encryption plus a public zero test. So this makes a clear distinction because a homomorphic encryption you can think about it supports secret decryption functionality. Um, so we have a few candidates for multilinear map. We know how to do a, a bilinear map which takes one product in the exponent uh, 30 years ago by the way pairing uh, algorithm of Miller. Uh, for n multilinear map with n bigger or equal to three, we only have the, candidate, the first candidate since the first breakthrough of uh, Gaget or at uh, 2013. And now we have three candidates. They are all based on uh, non-standard use of lattices, which means we don't know how to base the security on uh, sort of like the shortest vector problem in general. Uh, among the three candidates, uh, the one of GG15 is mostly, uh, it's, this is uh, the one which is the close to LWE, which I'm gonna focus in this talk. So think about, uh, so let me give you my understanding of GG15. So think about the ring LWE analogy of uh, this idea of multilinear map. So you put all the secrets in, uh, as the LWE secret. So here we think about the secret, uh, it lives in the space where it's commute. So for example, the secret is uh, a matrix, it's not a vector, or it's just a ring element in the ring LW setting. And somehow we want to have a way to uh, magically map the exponent together uh, without revealing them in the middle. So this is the difficult part. Um, so uh, GG15, uh, this concept is also appear as cascaded uh, LWE in actually different works. Uh, actually, after you draw it uh, clear, it's kind of like chaining all these LW samples in some uh, special way. So you can also think about it as the blockchain in the multilinear maps. Uh, in, in the end, you will see a chain, and uh, uh, each chain has like uh, two slots. It's not like a blockchain which only have one, one line. You can, if you fork, it sucks, but uh, this is only like, a, uh, this is a, a general blockchain. So how to do it? Uh, so let me start the example by just uh, doing the chaining for two chains. Uh, so to connect the two LW sample, we will use the, um, the public matrix of uh, the left sample to also trap the sample some pre-image which connects to the next sample. So this is the brief idea. Uh, how to do it? We need to use the uh, trap door sampling algorithm. Uh, it has the functionality that given any image Y, uh, given the trap door of, uh, given A and its trap door, you can sample a small pre-image such that A times D equals to Y. And uh, if you sample the D matrices as the pre-image of uh, uh, LW sample SA plus E, and you publish the D matrices essentially as the encoding of the, uh, the LW secrets, then uh, to evaluate, you just uh, take the product of A0 and uh, D1, D2, uh, uh, evaluate, it will give you something like uh, the functional part has the product of S times A, and the, uh, the rest of the part are all small, uh, small noise, relatively small compared with the modulus Q. Uh, such that it realized the functionality in some sense. Um, so before talking about witness encryption means multilinear map, I want to mention briefly what's the harness of arguing security of a multilinear map. So because we are using trapdoor sampling, so therefore the LW-ness uh, LW of the left sample is not guaranteed in the beginning. 
So uh, just to keep it in mind, I will mention it later in the, uh, in the discussion of how to prove anything meaningful. So um, as I mentioned in the beginning, we want to talk about uh, witness encryption together with multilinear map. So the brief idea of building witness encryption for multilinear map is you encrypt the instance, you encrypt the message, and uh, homomorphically validate and the public test whether the, win the potential witness satisfied the instance. But this is kind of saying nothing. It's like uh, for most of the application, you can think it this way. So it uh, in turn shows multilinear map is very powerful. What I want to highlight for uh, a particular witness encryption uh, constructed by Gentry at all is uh, just forget about all the details. Um, it can magically turn uh, the witness encryption into a multilinear map candidate, uh, into a witness candidate uh, such that you can think about uh, the resulting plain text can be modeled by a read once branching program. And uh, this branching program is also low rank. Uh, think about the matrix branching program. If you represent it by matrices, it's the low rank matrix. So in some sense, uh, low rank matrices are bad news for multilinear maps because uh, uh, something I didn't put on the slides that the previous provable case uh, I show for log obfuscation and the pro uh, private constraint PIF, they are all based on permutation branching program. So low rank branching program is something that we haven't studied like uh, whether it's secure or not. Uh, the good news is uh, the resulting plain text you can think about is a read once branching program. So it's potentially much easier to think about. Uh, and uh, it has other nice structure which I didn't uh, kind of uh, abstract here. All right, so so far I've concluded that uh, there is a witness encryption candidate. If you instantiate with JGG15, it can be resulting to a low rank matrix expansion program as the secret. So in some sense, if we can prove uh, GG15 works for all the low rank branching program, then in some sense we are done, like uh, uh, this, uh, like a proof of the theorem. So we ask, can we show anything special? Uh, can we show anything secure for a uh, low rank branching program used together with GG15? And in this work, we say yes in some limited case. So what we will show is there is a special case of low rank branching program when it is used together with GGG15, it can be proved as secure as AWE. So this special instance is when there's one slot that is always random. Uh, for example, we assume it's at the bottom right diagonal. If this slot is always occupied on all the matrices, then uh, our theorem shows this kind of branching program can be proven as secure as AWE. So the top right part can be anything, even zero or whatever you want. Um, so before telling you how to prove anything, let me tell you a little bit about uh, uh, where can this special type of branching program be useful. In fact, uh, we don't know how to build a witness encryption or I.O. Uh, from this type of branching program. Uh, our candidates are only a stone throw from uh, this type of branching program. What we do know is uh, how to simplify the, the, uh, like the private constraint PRF and the lockable obfuscation using this framework. Uh, let me just give you one example. So if you take the uh, pun private punctual PIF constructed by Bonnet, Louis, and Wu, uh, which is described under the multilinear uh, subgroup uh, decision assumption, uh, if you instantiate in gg 15 you can instantiate in the following way. So that uh, there's a right, uh, the right bottom slot is the always random slot, uh, which, uh, which will uh, guarantee that you get a, a PRF, and that the top right part will be a punctual slot where you embed all the functionality you want. So this just to give you a brief flavor. In fact, you can prove it from uh, LWE. All right. All right. So, um, so now let's come into the proof. And uh, uh, first, let's uh, formalize what we are trying to prove. Uh, what we are trying to prove is uh, what we call semantic security uh, all the way back to, uh, from like the semantic security encryption. We also want to borrow the idea here. Uh, in some sense, we want to say uh, the top part is the real instantiation, like. Uh, all the A's you see, these are using capital sampling, and all the secrets, they contain the plain text, they contain the dangerous thing you want to hide. We want to show that uh, under some situation, uh, the real construction is indistinguishable from uh, a sort of a simulated construction where everything is like, a, uh, the A matrix is random, U matrix is random, D is like a random Gaussian. It doesn't contain anything about the, uh, the secrets uh, on the top. So this is the goal of the proof. So uh, in fact, before telling you the proof uh, of uh, 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 GGH15 with low rank branching program, it's worth to take a quick overview of GGH15 uh, used together with permutation branching program. It will be helpful. So uh, 
on a high level, uh, what you can do with uh, GGG15 with uh, permutation branching programs is, so uh, we need to start a proof strategy from uh, the right-hand side of the LW sample to the left-hand side, because the right-hand side is the only uh, A matrix we, which we didn't use it to do a trapdoor sampling. So first, we need to use the lemma of uh, 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 permutation branching program LWE, which says if the S secret is, uh, looks like a permutation branching program considering some uh, random Gaussian matrix S, then you can prove LW sample with this structure uh, kind of matrix is indistinguishable from random. So this is the uh, special part where we use, uh, where, where the previous works use uh, permutations. So with this strategy, you can go one step left by uh, turning uh, LW samples to random. And then you use the GPV trapdoor sampling lemma uh, to close the trapdoor. Because the purpose is like uh, all the way back, we want to use the fact that uh, the trapdoor of A is not used uh, to go all the way left and uh, uh, using GPV. Uh, so GPV says if the image is random, then there's an oblivious way to sample it without using the trapdoor of A. All right, so using LWE plus GPV, LWE plus GPV, again, 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 we go all the way from right to left, and eventually we can close all the trapdoor, and uh, uh, it turns out to be the simulated distribution. So this is the end of the, uh, 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 the replay of the previous uh, proof technique. So uh, you may ask, so now what's the difference for low rank matrix expansion program? So now we will see the difference. Um, so to see the difference, let's zoom in the, the, even the first chunk of the, uh, the trapdoor sampling. And uh, eventually, we will get a low rank matrix. Let's just think about uh, like a two block uh, uh, low rank matrix. Uh, uh, and uh, it's, now it's useful to actually separate the, uh, the public A matrix into a top part and the bottom part. So the bottom part is still nice, uh, as we guarantee that we put a random matrix on all the, all the uh, lower right diagonal of uh, or, the, or, or, the, or the secret matrix. So we can all also uh, still uh, guarantee that uh, the Y bottom part looks like random. Uh, but to record, to trigger GPV, we need to show that the entire matrix is uniform, uh, which uh, is not the case here. Uh, so the real problem is like, uh, how do we go uh, left to try to close the trapdoor of something on the left? So to handle this uh, kind of like a half scenario, we need to introduce a new lattice trapdoor lemma which says, uh, if you have an image where the top part is anything, uh, the, uh, the bottom part is uniform, then you can use half of the trapdoor, uh, uh, you can simulate half of the trapdoor, uh, uh, sorry, you can close the, uh, the trapdoor of the bottom part and uh, use the trapdoor of the top part to sample a pre-image of Z, and uh, you can pretend still this D lives in the right distribution. In fact, uh, these two distributions are statistically close. So using our first lattice lemma, we can at least uh, do one step left. And uh, since we guarantee that all the matrices has the right bottom part being a random, then we can go all the way uh, to the left, uh, closing the trapdoor of the bottom part. So this is kind of halfway down. And uh, to, 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 show entire, uh, to show the entire semantic security, we still need to handle the top part. And in fact, the most interesting information it's usually on the top part because we are going to encode whatever we want on the, on the top uh, left matrix. So how do we handle the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the upper matrix? So it turns out uh, I sneak a little bit of the construction. I haven't told you that in the actual construction, what we publish is the, uh, the top plus bottom uh, A matrix. So we don't separate them. Uh, you can say that if you separate them, uh, uh, the secret can be actually explicitly reviewed. So if you only publish the sum of uh, all the left matrix, uh, which in other terminology, you can think about this as the left bookend in the traditional uh, obfuscation from GGH15, then uh, we are going to use the second property that uh, if you assemble the pre-image of anything plus small error, and uh, uh, if you are just assemble it directly and you watch this D matrix, this is clearly a pre-image of Y under the function A. But uh, we have the simple, uh, we have a funny of observation that if we can hide the A matrix and the Z plus E matrix, then you can actually show uh, this D matrix, the pre-image uh, is indistinguishable from uh, a random Gaussian matrix. So this is like a new lattice lemma that uh, if you sample pre-image and also hide the, the functionality in some sense, 
then it gives you a preimage which is indistinguishable from some canonical distribution. So with the second lattice lemma, we can uh, actually go all the way right, because first we had the left matrix, uh, the A top, it's using trapdoor, it's fine, we show it can be hidden by the bottom part. Uh, you turn this D matrix into Gaussian, and you can use this strategy all the way to the right. So let's review the proof again. So uh, uh, it's kind of like two steps. So the first step uh, is more complicated than the uh, permutation branching program in the sense that the uh, permutation branching program you only need to do one way. So now we first close the trapdoor of the bottom, uh, then uh, handle uh, the top part using the uh, second lattice lemma. So using these two tools, uh, we can show that this type of branching program used together with GG15 uh, is as secure as the RWE. And, uh, right? So this summarized the, the proof part and all the uh, uh, interesting, uh, inter interesting technique in the proofs. So um, let me just say a little bit about uh, uh, attacks. So um, I said we can only prove certain type of uh, uh, low rank branching program, uh, but what about the rest of them? So for the rest of them, uh, we show that some of them can be broken. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, instead of telling you like, uh, what's the theory behind the attack, uh, let me just uh, tell you that the attack uh, uh, algorithm is very simple. So you first uh, compute a matrix uh, by collecting a lot of evaluations on the potential I.O. candidate. Then you test uh, the rank of the, this matrix. So this is the analysis by picture for a read once branching program. Uh, uh, the analysis is going to be very, very complicated if you work with a read many times branching program. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, we also published the Sage code of uh, 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 just uh, demonstrated uh, how to attack. And I also run the attack on uh, the code of, uh, written by Shai et al. And uh, uh, you can also uh, try it by yourself. So, uh, uh, so, okay, so in the end, what about witness encryption? So in some sense, uh, we, don't know how to, uh, we don't know how to make a witness encryption which falls into the uh, categorized uh, cat category that we can prove anything. Uh, and in fact, uh, which I didn't say is like uh, the attack can be also used to uh, use to broke uh, all the assumption we make to, towards the witness encryption. But still, we get some witness encryption we don't know how to break, and uh, we believe it's kind of a stone throw from a provable one. So it's leaving as a candidate. Uh, I hope uh, people are interested to, to look at it. And also, we also uh, uh, write uh, an I/O candidate which uh, demonstrate what we don't know how to prove. Uh, so this, uh, honestly, I have a little bit less confidence, but uh, still, uh, even after this summer, I don't know how to break it. Um, uh, these are the related works. So uh, uh, the two lattice lemmas are also mentioned in the concurrent work. In fact, they uh, appeared earlier. They just uh, didn't publish an e-print uh, of Goya at all to build a uh, trader tracing from LWE. And also there's another work by uh, 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 they uh, illustrate the limitation of uh, our attack on GGG15 based uh, I.O. candidates. Uh, what I think uh, uh, about the, uh, one of the interesting future direction is you can still try to build applications using the simple multilinear map framework. I think about you are using subgroup decision assumption or slots or something like that, and I try to instantiate uh, using GGG15 because I believe there is something to explore uh, in this direction and to try to see if it can be proven from uh, so that's it. Thanks for your thanks for your time.